and welcome back to the struggle sec cybersecurity channel where we're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Keep that in mind. I want to say that every single time normalizing struggle in cybersecurity. And what better topic to normalize struggle in cybersecurity than to go over my own journey into the field. So let me just start from the beginning. I graduate from undergraduate with an electrical engineering degree. Grew up born and raised in Detroit. And pretty much if you're going to school for engineering, you go to school for electrical or mechanical, and then you jump into the automotive field, whether it's Chrysler, GM, or Ford Motor Company there in the city. So that's exactly what I did. I graduated with an electrical engineering degree with a focus in power systems analysis. And then I worked for a tier one supplier, Ford Motor Company. So as I was working for that organization, I've worked as what you call a wire harness design engineer. Don't get caught up in the titles. Don't get caught up in the, the fancy bachelor's degree or anything, because coming out of undergrad, you really don't know too much of what you want to do, right? I was very much so struggling to understand my own professional journey, my own professional career pathway, because I mean, I was working for a good organization. I was working as an electrical engineer, but I did not know what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. So my role coming out um, of college, working there with that supplier for Ford, it was a pretty cool intro gig, right? It was pretty cool going into that field. And like I said, I was a wire harness design engineer where I was pretty much responsible for different electrical distribution uh, systems within Ford vehicles from pretty much the inception, like, like the beginning of the vehicle, all the way until it came off the line and went to someone's house. So that was mainly my responsibility. We designed that the wire harness designs pretty much in there in Michigan. And then we traveled down to Mexico or different parts of the world to, to make sure that the way that it was manufactured was aligned with the Ford Motor Company requirements. And then from there, um, we went back up to the plants there in Michigan, and then we verified things. We made sure that our wire harness in the vehicle did not cause a problem. So it was cool. There was some traveling and whatnot. But like I said, I struggled to really understand where I was going from a career perspective. I didn't see myself learning much newer things. I didn't see technology or advances in technology and what I was doing. So I really had to make a decision at that point. And right, that's where that struggle comes in. I didn't know where to go, but I decided to transition into the nuclear field because I work for a local utility. There is a local utility there in Michigan around Detroit called DTE Energy, Detroit Edison. And they had a nuclear plant called the Fermi 2 nuclear plant. So I pretty much got hired on there as more of like an entry level or associate engineer, nuclear engineer or nuclear INC, instrumentation and control engineer. That was, those were the majority of my responsibilities where you're responsible for different plant systems, within the plant environment, making sure that things were running well, running good, and that the nuclear energy was able to produce electricity for the surrounding area. Again, it seems very technical in nature. It seems difficult. It seems hard. I wouldn't say it was easy, but it wasn't as hard as you think it was. So I know you all are wondering, like, when are we going to get to the cybersecurity? You're talking about this engineering stuff, wire harness design, nuclear engineer, pretty much the way I got into it was by a mistake. I mistakenly got into cybersecurity because a recent event had happened in the Middle East from in the cyber world called Stuxnet. And we can probably get into some more of that in later videos, but Stuxnet happened, some malware in the Middle East at a nuclear facility, it affected a nuclear facility, and it pretty much caused shockwaves all around the United States for commercial nuclear. So that pretty much means that there were different regulations that were coming down the pipe from the government and they needed to implement new cybersecurity guidance within nuclear plant environments. And I was in a nuclear plant environment. So as a result, I was assigned many of those cybersecurity responsibilities. I was uh, assigned many of those cybersecurity program responsibilities. And that was pretty much my introduction into cybersecurity. So it was at a nuclear plant. So at the time I was working as like a nuclear cybersecurity engineer. It sounds like a crazy title, but that's exactly what I was doing. I was a nuclear cybersecurity engineer and it was fun, right? I was learning about uh, the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. 
I was learning about some other cybersecurity principles such as defense in depth, like a, having a layered defenses around those critical and impactful assets and devices and systems in your environment. I was learning so much and that pretty much sparked a big like love in my heart and a big desire in my heart to learn more and more and more. Now, I didn't come from a traditional IT administration background. I didn't really have a good understanding of like Windows internals or Linux operating systems or just cybersecurity in general. So I had to kind of switch my mind, understand what those gaps were in my own experience, and then pretty much uh, apply that and find a learning path associated with my gaps. And I think that that was the biggest struggle there because Sometimes you might not know, and you might be in the same boat, right? So I knew that I was in cybersecurity now, but I didn't understand where my gaps were. And I got a lot of that understanding from working in the field, asking questions, going on job boards, going on Reddit. Reddit was a big helper in my overall um, understanding of cybersecurity. And I wanna kind of leave that with you until the next video. That's how I got into cybersecurity but it wasn't easy, right? I went from one job to another job to another job before I landed in this field. And I think that that might be some of your own journeys. You might be some career transitioners. You might be brand new to cybersecurity, but I think that once you understand your gaps, understand that you wanna get into this field, creating that learning plan, creating that halfway for yourself, career pathway, understanding what that is, and also understanding what gaps in knowledge and gaps in understanding that you have, those were all elements that helped me to get into cybersecurity and stay here and be successful in the field. So I wanna leave you with that, where again, we normalize struggling in cybersecurity. Subscribe to my channel, put down some, some comments for some additional content that you might wanna hear. If you wanna hear more struggle stories or, you, or if you want me to go into more depth about some of those knowledge gaps, I can do that too. So come again, come again, where we normalize struggling in cybersecurity and come along and struggle with me. All right, thank you.